If this is confirmed, we'll be looking at the news of the century, the first truly convincing evidence of life beyond Earth, and it may have arisen right next door, on Mars. The Red Planet has always held a special place in our imagination, but it's not just romanticism. For billions of years in the solar system's history, Mars had conditions that looked a lot like those on early Earth. There are signs of ancient rivers, lakes, and even oceans that may have covered parts of its surface. These watery environments, along with deposits of minerals that form in the presence of water, hints of geothermal activity, and the detection of organic molecules, paint a picture where microscopic life could have emerged and, for a time, thrived. It's in this context that NASA's new discovery appears, singled out as the strongest clue yet observed for the possibility of Martian life. Today, step by step, we're going to understand what was found and why so many in the scientific community are excited, cautious but excited. To picture Mars, imagine a vast landscape in orange and reddish tones where the soil is rich in iron oxides. That natural rust is what gives the planet its signature color. The terrain is marked by rocky plains and dunes sculpted by persistent winds that move sand grains across wide regions and create patterns that change slowly, almost like a geological clock in slow motion. Over billions of years, the surface was chiseled by volcanism, impacts and erosion. A key point for understanding why Mars looks so dry today is the loss of its magnetic field. Without that global protection, the atmosphere was stripped away by the solar wind. Over time, liquid water on the surface became unstable. The result is the cold, arid desert we see now. But the past tells a different story. Observations by orbiting satellites revealed fossilized riverbeds, deltas formed by ancient currents, and deposits that only make sense if water flowed for a long time. In other words, Mars used to be wet. This deep climate shift is central to the puzzle. If water endured for long periods, there may have been enough chemical energy, nutrients, and environmental stability for microorganisms to appear. The question, therefore, isn't just, was there water, but did those environments preserve signs of biological processes? That's where the rovers come in, true laboratories on wheels. Unlike orbital probes, which observe from above and map large areas, Rovers get down on the ground. They touch rock, drill, heat samples, probe chemical composition with spectrometers, capture high-resolution images, and sniff the local atmosphere. This proximity makes it possible to investigate textures, patterns, and microscopic structures that, on Earth, sometimes hold biosignatures, clues that may have been shaped by biological processes, even when life itself is no longer there. Since February 2021, the most advanced rover ever sent to the Red Planet has been operating in a carefully chosen region. It landed in a crater that once held a large lake and preserves a fossilized river delta, a perfect place to accumulate and protect fine sediments and organic material. With ultra-high definition cameras, instruments to identify elements and minerals, and a drilling system, the mission was designed to search for biosignatures on three fronts, chemical, mineral, and textural. In parallel, this robot has another valuable capability. It can collect soil and rock fragments in sealed tubes, storing them for a future mission that aims to bring them back to Earth. Here, in laboratories with equipment far more sensitive than anything we can fly on a robot, the chances of finding complex organic molecules or indirect signs of ancient metabolism go way up. Even before those samples return, the onboard instruments are already delivering impressive data, and this is where the new clue comes into play. In an ancient riverbed inside that crater lake, the rover collected a sample nicknamed Sapphire Canyon, taken from a rock known as Shiva Falls. This material is part of a rock unit described as the Bright Angel Formation, composed of thin, clay-rich layers in a stretch that is dry today. On Earth, environments like this are famous for preserving delicate records, sedimentary structures, grains coated by mineral films, microscopic patterns, and sometimes the chemical stamp of microbes that once lived there. The analysis revealed something that caught scientists' attention. In addition to elements such as organic carbon, sulfur, phosphorus, and oxidized iron, a combination that, on our planet, is associated with energy harvesting pathways used by microorganisms, 
there appeared coloration patterns described as leopard spots. These spots are linked to certain minerals including vivianite, a hydrated iron phosphate, and gregite, an iron sulfide. In terrestrial settings, both frequently show up where organic matter is decomposing and processes are mediated by microbial communities. This proves nothing on its own, but it's like opening a drawer and finding side by side several objects typical of the same story. What makes the clue especially interesting is the kind of reactions that explain the simultaneous formation of these minerals. For vivianite and gregite to occur together, it's common to have electron transfers between organic matter and the surrounding environment. In simple terms, energy exchanges that resemble the operation of natural batteries. On Earth, this kind of flux is at the heart of many bacteria's metabolism. They breathe compounds, use iron or sulfur as electron acceptors, and build chemical chains that leave mineralogical marks. Of course, reactions like these can happen without life, but for a purely abiotic origin, certain scenarios are more likely. Very high temperatures, strongly acidic environments, or conditions that don't match what instruments see in that region. The absence of those extremes, coupled with the association between minerals and spots, strengthens not confirms, but strengthens, the hypothesis of a past biological contribution. Another detail stood out, the relative age of the rocks analyzed. They are among the youngest examined by the mission so far. Many expected that, if there were signs of ancient biological processes, they would be confined to formations very distant in time. If clues show up in more recent layers, that suggests potentially habitable environments may have persisted longer than we thought. Practically speaking, it's like discovering that the window of opportunity for life on Mars wasn't a brief blink of an eye, but perhaps a prolonged phase, with lakes reappearing, groundwater circulating, and chemical cycles remaining active for ages. It's worth emphasizing prudence. Claims about life demand a very high standard of evidence, Science advances only with solid data and independent lines of verification. That's why the strategy to bring samples back to Earth is so powerful. With them in hand, we'll be able to examine the organization of organic molecules, assess chirality, where it makes sense, investigate relationships between mineral grains and the films coating them, measure isotopes with precision, and above all, check whether the observed patterns fit better with biological processes or can be convincingly explained by inorganic chemistry. Until then, what we have is a set of clues that, together, tell a coherent and fascinating story. Think of the investigation as an old crime with no witnesses. You step onto the scene and find footprints, handprints, a dropped object in just the right place, a scent in the air. None of these things, by themselves, solves the case. But when they all show up together, you start to form a robust hypothesis. On Mars, the footprints would be minerals like vivianite and gregite. The prints would be the leopard spot patterns in the sedimentary record. The scent would be the presence of organic carbon, phosphorus and sulfur in arrangements compatible with microbial pathways. What's missing is the final confession, the irrefutable confirmation, which will only come with much more detailed analyses. If this interpretation holds, the implications are profound. It would show that life isn't an almost impossible rarity, but a phenomenon that can arise when liquid water, active chemistry and time come together. We'd at least partially resolve a question that has followed humanity since we first looked at the sky and wondered whether we're alone. And all of this without leaving our cosmic backyard, just a few months of robotic travel away within the same star system on a world with much in common with early Earth. Another point worth highlighting is the method. The landing site, a crater lake with a fossilized delta, was no accident. Deltas function as natural archives. They receive, layer by layer, whatever the river carries. Fine particles, salts, organic matter, microfractures filled by minerals that precipitate over time. In such environments, delicate textures have a chance to escape destruction and remain preserved like pages in a book. Reading that book requires diverse instruments, cameras to see patterns, spectrometers to identify elements, drilling to reach material not exposed to modern radiation and dust. It's the combination of these readings that gives meaning to the chapters. And then there's the future sample return, each sealed tube carries a piece of history. 
In Earth-based labs, we'll be able to use techniques that don't fit on a rover. High-resolution chromatography and mass spectrometry to decode organic molecules, nanoscale tomography to see the internal architecture of rocks, isotopic analyses capable of distinguishing biological signatures from purely geochemical ones. This leap in precision could turn a promising hypothesis into a compelling conclusion. For now, what we can say with confidence is that the Sapphire Canyon sample, collected from the Shiva Falls rock and associated with the Bright Angel Formation, brings together a highly suggestive set of clues. The coordinated presence of specific minerals, coloration patterns, and chemical elements tied to metabolic pathways known on Earth builds a strong argument that biological processes may have played some role in the chemistry of those sediments. The absence of extreme conditions that would favor simple abiotic explanations reinforces the biological reading, though it doesn't mandate it. And the fact that these rocks are among the youngest examined indicates that Mars's window of habitability may have been broader in time than many models imagined. None of this takes the foot off the brake of scientific caution. On the contrary, it raises the bar. In science, transformative discoveries require replication, checks, and honest attempts to refute a hypothesis before accepting it. That's how we avoid illusions and ensure every claim holds up when viewed from all angles. The good news is that Mars's research plan was built for this. Collect, compare, repeat measurements, and finally, bring samples back for an investigation no robotic instrument could carry out alone. Whatever the outcome, we've already learned a lot. If a biological origin is confirmed, we'll rewrite entire sections of science books. If, on the other hand, everything can be explained by inorganic chemistry, we'll still have an extraordinary map of how Martian geology can mimic, in certain contexts, the signatures life leaves on Earth. In both cases, our understanding of how rocky worlds evolve, lose atmospheres, store water for a time, and perhaps open doors to biology will take a leap. And that understanding matters not only for Mars, but for the search for life on icy moons and exoplanets orbiting other stars. Summing up without downplaying the importance, we're getting closer to answering one of humanity's deepest questions. Did life flourish only on Earth, or did it also sprout on other worlds? The newest clues from the Red Planet, with Sapphire Canyon, Shiver Falls, the Bright Angel Formation, minerals like Vivianite and Gregeet, elements such as organic carbon, sulfur and phosphorus, and patterns like leopard spots, make up the most convincing narrative seen there so far. The final confirmation is still missing, and it will come from the rigor of analyses yet to come. Until then, the best we can do is keep an open mind and our feet firmly planted in the scientific method. If this content helped you better understand what's happening on Mars, it makes all the difference if you hit like right now. That tells the platform it's worth recommending this video. And if you enjoy science, astronomy, and space exploration explained clearly and directly, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way, you won't miss the next discoveries. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.